Boom, we're on. Smashing. Today's guest, we've got an amazing Scott to read. Great guy, great actor. <laughs> Shout out <to> football. <laughs> How are we, Scotty boy? Aye, very well, very well. I think it's time for me to go. After the <laughs> football comment. Um, obviously, still game. Massive. Methadone, mate. mate. Yeah. Absolutely brilliant. Best character in it for my, mate. And I'm not just saying that because you're here now, so I don't need to butt you up. But absolutely fantastic. How's life been since... It's still game days. Aye, it's been great. Um, I mean, it was a bit of a whirlwind when I, you know, the first series, uh, you know, came about, and a couple of things just came into role. There was a couple of programs after that, like Line of Duty, and then I went and did this big UK tour for the National Theatre. So it was kind of just like busy in a really good way, like taking it all and just trying to enjoy it, but at the same time, like not worry about it and just like go on with it and try not to worry about the pressure or. Uh -huh. do, you know, do you know what I mean just kind of just aye. see it through and you know take it for what it was and and, and, and you know maximise it you know that's been brilliant mate and like I say mate I thoroughly enjoyed you on the show mate it has been a breath of fresh thanks, air mate thanks very much is it the how did the character come about was that the part you auditioned for so it was they had already obviously Ford and Greg uh, they obviously write the show and they'd obviously been writing a character because uh, the actor Jake Darcy who played what's well, terrible I can't even remember Peter Jakey he um he passed away in real life. So they wanted to kind of replace that mad maverick of a character, mm -hmm. kind of something more on a, more like spiritualist kind of way, like on a different level just to everybody mm -hmm. else. So they kind of started writing this character and I was doing a play at the Citizens at the time uh, that Ricky Ross uh, had wrote the music for from Deacon Blue. And actor Paul Higgins wrote it, it was I think called The Choir. And um, Julie Wilson Nimmo, Greg's wife, um, Miss Hooley out of Balamori. Mm -hmm. uh, she came and saw the show with Greg, and Greg obviously just kind of took a shine to me and said, You know, do you want to come and, you know, read this part? We, we, we mean Ford. So uh, that was surreal in itself, you know, because I'd met Greg a couple of times. The, you know, the acting community in Scotland's not that big, so everybody knows everybody's business. But at the same time, you know, yeah. you, you get to know people very quickly, so mm -hmm. that was good. But that was, it was really surreal the first, you know, pulling up to, oh. I was doing a short film in Glasgow at the time at Film City and I pulled up in a taxi to, you know, Greg's house up in the West End and the two of them were sitting out smoking the vapes and <laughs> Greg, Greg, Greg had this big beard and Ford sitting there like the way he does with it and his big pink <laughs> shirt, big white collar. <laughs> All right, son, how you doing? And you come, my, you know, and just surreal, you know, mm -hmm. you're just going, I don't know how you know, how I, these guys I've seen on the telly all these years and all these characters, you know, tune the fat and obviously still mm -hmm. game, you know, Dear Green Place and stuff like that. You think, you know, while I'm sitting here just chatting to them, you know, try to have a laugh, try to keep my cool. Mm -hmm. And I'm, you know, totally shitting myself, you know. That's fucking unbelievable. So then you get these, they, they hand me like the scripts. It's very, you know, it's a cold read. It's not, it wasn't like, there was no pressure. Just read it and, you know, we think the character's like this. You know, have a read. What do you think? We'll give you a couple of minutes, five minutes, and then we just kind of sat and read it. And the weirdest thing about the whole situation is I was sitting in Greg's living room and then the two of them were just themselves chatting away and then as soon as we started reading, these two old men appeared. You know, it's obviously Jack and Victor, which was like really bizarre because Ford's sitting there in the armchair, you know, pink shirt, Greg's got this huge big beard and all of a sudden these two characters that you've known your whole life just come, you know, and that, that, it was a really um, like a special moment mm -hmm. like a moment of like real you know a, a real sense of pride to you know to be i think in probably scotland's best comedy writers ever yeah you know especially the best double act anyway i, I would say and you know and then obviously because it's the bbc there's lots of you know red tape and formality so i actually had to go and you know I, I, 10 minutes after i left the house greg phoned me saying i think you're great but want you for the part and then about three weeks later my agent says so you need to go into the bbc in addition so it was a bit, you know. How's that? Because because the BBC they can't they can't just give somebody a job, uh -huh. if, especially if it's a thing that's been produced by the BBC. Mm -hmm. You know they've got to go through because it's mm -hmm. taxpayers' money, right. so they've obviously got to go through the mm -hmm. the steps. Mm -hmm. So that was bizarre. That's amazing. Man. You know, like a disagreement. With, uh -huh. You know, the director. Well, no, uh -huh. the boys told me to do it like this, and he's going, "Oh, how do you know? Like, have you read this before?" And you're like, "I was in." I was in their house. So you buzzing for it then? When they've said you've got the job, but then you have to do it again. You find a shite yourself. I, 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 it's, 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 it's. Uh, acting's not. Every, everybody thinks it's really glamorous and really straightforward, and it's, it's really, really not. There's lots of waiting about, and you're really at the mercy of other people. 
and especially in TV and film, it's not actually up to the directors or really the writers. It's these exec producers at the top, and you know they they hold the weight of all responsibility. But at the same time, you know they get to pick and choose and oh. see if they just don't like the cut of your jib. You're just not getting the job, oh. or if they think you're just a bit too young, young or old, oh. you're, you're screwed. Do you know what I mean? So a lot it, of steps. Aye. So it's it's not it's not just like the director goes, I like you, I want you. Like the director says, I like you, and then I have to go and show all these like five people, uh -huh. you know. And if they like you, then you get the job. And if they don't, somebody else gets it. Because that's the work's no great in Glasgow, is it? There's no much work, and to get that job, which is the biggest in Scotland, yeah, um, it's a massive achievement for yourself. I mean, we're not producing a lot of you know high quality drama or I'd, I'd say comedy. You know, up. Uh -huh. um, I mean, we've got a brilliant arts in theatre community like it's really buzzing the theatre community in Scotland is really really great and that's what I learned you know that's my training really after I finished drama oh. school uh, and that community is a really you know generous vibrant giving loving oh. community of good people very very talented actors but it's, it's a shame we're just not making as much drama as what we used to be and uh, you know or, or, or even comedy you know at one point you know we had like Lemmy and Burniston and all these things were just coming and coming and coming and now it's really got quite static and oh. you know apart from still game which you know still going. that can always go that can always when the seasons win seven yeah uh, this is the ninth season's about to start filming you so that was the eighth it's just finished yeah that's that's a long show as well isn't it but like I say your rap scene is but it's not they can all pop back up because the band the, the, you know yourself the I, Scottish people the Glasgow people they're, they're all fucking nuts but it's also I, I mean I, I really believe it's time for something like you know fresh a, a, fresh as well like because you know you only appreciate the stuff you've got when new stuff comes up and mm. actually the stuff that's kicking around just now is, is, is really disappointing I mean you look down south and you know the open all hours just came back and there was this you know they, they've just they're just bringing out all the, the old sitcoms that were really successful in like the seventies, oh. eighties, and nineties. You know, they're trying to bring them back. Why do you think that is? Because of just to give some people, people just want to feel comfortable. Mm -hmm. You know, at home mm -hmm. and sit on a Thursday wet, wet night and Thursday. Yeah. You know, and it's miserable and go. Oh, I remember, I remember that. We used to watch that. You know, Ronnie, Ronnie Barker. All the films that. and horses. And all that. They stuff. have only been done, but then you need somebody fresh then to fucking change the game. That's it. You know, know what I mean? And I don't know. I mean, I don't, I don't know how how it is to fix that. I mean, I, I I'm. I'm not a, a a writer. I'm not a stand-up comedian. Uh -huh. um, for me, you know, for me, still game. You know, although it is a comedy, the character I play, Methel Mc, to me, is not really a comedy character. It's a, uh -huh. it's just a guy who's you know got real you know struggles, but he's also <laughs> takes meth every day, which is sounds a bit like myself. <laughs> 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 How when did the teeth get put in yet? So they um. So in the job and the, the the episode about the job, right. that was obviously the thing about the, the you know mm. he said you know the transfer because mm. and Greg was really good about Methel because it's about redemption, it's about a guy fixing him fixing his life, mm -hmm. it's about you know him sorting his stuff out mm -hmm. and you know kind of getting back on track. Right. So it's like you know the physical thing is like a really easy you know the teeth was such an easy fix you know because mm -hmm. he's got really bad mm -hmm. grotty black you know teeth and mm -hmm. to get that done it was. You know, it's a really easy step, but also something the audience could, mm -hmm. you know, relate to. And you know, mm -hmm. thank goodness it went down a storm. I see you've got your Mr. <laughs> McTeet in for the interview. <laughs> <laughs> that is the thing that people will remember you, but for still game is the teeth. And uh, which, I, which is good because it completely gives me. A, a, I, I don't particularly think I, you know, I don't look like Mick at all huh. in normal life. I mean, no. <laughs> you know, because I, you know, I. In certain situations, it, it changes. Like about, mm -hmm. I could walk down the street, you know, in Glasgow, mm -hmm. down Buchanan Street, and nobody would even mm -hmm. second look at me, apart from some of the girls, you know, obviously, because that's. What, <laughs> that's uh, what being an actor. <laughs> I don't um, know the feeling, mate. Don't uh, worry. And uh, I, in, in in some days, it's different. Some days people do recognise you, but mm -hmm. it really gives me a different. It, it's it's like I get I get to wear a mask. That mm -hmm. you know the teeth and the bonnet. You know yeah. they, they they really give me. Mm -hmm. Separation from him as a so I feel like when I put the teeth in, I like it could I, be a good thing because it kind of like I say that attention as well can it's, it's good man but it can fuck your heat up can it? Aye for sure. Uh -huh. I, I there was um we we do we do find it hard as a family at times mm -hmm. you know like we're very close you know my mum my dad Brian Julie and my sister Alex like we're very you know really really a close unit. Mm -hmm. And there is times I think they they go oh this is how you know at times this is great this is you know. But actually, there's been times where I've kind of found myself going, I don't really know how to deal with a situation, or especially I got, I got some quite negative press 
off like on Twitter and stuff like that as much as Twitter was great in the uh -huh. first season for me the second season it was quite negative there was like, there was kind of a backlash by certain you know sections of the fans which is which is allowed which is okay but you kind of just get to yourself you, you you know you go this is my first time having to deal with that pressure or having to deal with the uh -huh. you know so open negativity and actually just uh -huh. try and compress that move on with that and kind of uh -huh. Go forward, do you know what I mean? Right. It's, it's tricky. Because people see you on the tail and they just think he's no feelings and emotions. That's the character he plays all the time. He's just, do you know what I mean? Nobody sees everybody's equal or a human being and the negative comments, man, it, it fucking sting me. They hurt. They do, they do, but also, like, you know, I, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a, not to feel sorry for myself, right? At all, because I'm a very privileged mm -hmm. person. I get to do what I love. Like, act, acting to me is not a job, act, it's just the thing, I, it's my passion, it's the thing I love more than anything else in the world. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe apart from, you know, pretending I'm a football player, like, because <laughs> I, I love that, but those were the two things that I absolutely loved growing up. Um, so for me, acting, going on to set or, you know, being on stage, that's that's not a job, that's, mm -hmm. it's just kind of a laugh, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? It's, you go to work and you laugh, or you go to work and, you know, you make mm -hmm. people cry or you, make, you know, entertain people. So I feel very, very, you know, I'm very privileged and it's hard sometimes because people think you're a millionaire. Yeah, because they see you on the telly. And they think you've got it all and they think that you've, you know, and, and you just, you know, grew up in peace, mate. Do you yeah. know what I mean? Just trying to get, not playing the working class hero at all, but just trying to get by and just trying to make ends meet and worrying about money and worrying about, you know, you know, you've got, it's this whole living your best life. Oh. It really drives me insane because all the time you've got to pretend that you're in a good place all the time and actually you know, these days you're not in a good place, uh -huh. you know, this this periods of your life are, well, are darker than other periods, uh -huh. and it's about trying to just get, uh, you know, through that, and mm -hmm. it's tricky, it's hard. And yeah, that's what I'm saying, just because you're on the tail and you're playing a massive part, people think, oh, he's got a great life, but like I say, we still battle the demons, we still have days when we can't be arsed, and yep. we still get the negative, and we think, right, where's my career going, what's the next acting job, because there's no many acting jobs in Glasgow, you've got to go to London and America, so it's tough, but... Well, obviously, we're still getting things give you a massive platform. Yeah, but it's going to open doors and people could recognise you because you're a good guy. <laughs> you're a good guy, mate. You're very well liked, like I say. But when you're playing stuff like that, everybody will want a piece of you. Yeah, they want a PC and they think, oh, get him do this. Do you know what I mean? Which can be hard as well. I know because I didn't really want to have to come into this podcast <laughs> in the first place. The button up, say, his, say his acting skills have been good, man. But, <laughs> but like you know yourself, everybody wants a wee PC and it's trying to figure out who you can trust and do you know what I mean as well that's it but you've got to be I mean it, 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 life's no fair right but you've got to, you've got to trust people you've got to give people your time and then you've got to learn the lessons from that and not try and be as open-minded and not Aye. be negative or, or, or you know have a bad attitude mm -hmm. you've got to trust people you've got to give people a chance especially in the acting as well man especially you know I mean? like my, my job is i could go in I, I you know you could cast me in a tv program or a film and i have to come in maybe i meet you once before the morning we do a shoot and i have to be able to give you everything as an actor mm -hmm. i have to trust that you're not going to fuck me mm -hmm. You know, and, and that's the like, old James Mate with me. You know what I mean? right. <laughs> like, but, shagging out his <laughs> But you know what I mean? It's like uh -huh. you, you try, it's like you have to be, you have to just, I, I, like a drop of a heart, really mm -hmm. trust people. Drop the guard. Because other people's, your, your future's in other people's hands. So you know what I mean? You're not in control of it. How did you get into the acting? Oh, so, I mean, I was young, not professionally, but like, like there was a, play, a Pace Youth Theatre I went to in Paisley which has been like a massive part of my life. I was there, you know, from the age of six up to 16. And then they employed me, like, as a general assistant when I was at drama school, like filling vending machines and ordering paper and nonsense like that. And then I went and they, do, they have a professional panto. So I did that, at, you know, the year after, I, excuse me, the year after I finished drama school. And that was just like a youth, you know, it was like a, you know, I used to go there on the Saturday. So I play football Saturday morning pace and you know Saturday afternoon and really it was just kind of to give my mum and dad a break at the weekend you know as well but something that I really grew into really loved it was a it's bizarre because I was never I, I hate the like all the cheesy you know jazz hands and all that's, mm -hmm. that's not me it was always something about being able to make other people feel something and you were in control of that you know so we used to do this I like I think it's so stupid but I remember it so vividly like this thing called park bench and basically your objective was to get the person off the bench 
or and and you had to like it was so, such a stupid little exercise it was just so, so easy because you could come in and make stupid noises or whatever mm-hmm. you're young but for me it was like an ability like how can you come in straight away and affect somebody and really like get them quick get them slow you know it was just like playing with people Aye. and that and, and there was something about that that fascinated me in acting about what you do to the other person mm-hmm. it's like you've got to affect either the audience or the person you're acting with and there was something about that at such an early level uh, early, early age that i that i just really it just kind of excited me it kind of gave me um you know that real boost of adrenaline mm-hmm. and then obviously you start doing you know shows and you know like a little bit of shakespeare and stuff like that and do they shakespeare i had done um, tough fat, is it not? Aye, it's hard, yeah. It, I mean, obviously, like, I was at drama school, uh, at the Conservatoire, the Royal Conservatoire of Scotland, like, they obviously give you the basic, like, they teach you how to be able to handle all the texts and stuff like that. And I've been very lucky. I've done, I think, three professional Shakespeare plays. That's it. Um, you know, and it's, I've done that and, you know, just try to do as, mu- as many things across the board, you know what I mean? Like, Shakespeare's, like, the greatest actors can do Shakespeare, but the greatest actors in my book can also do the comedy uh-huh. and they can also sing a little bit and they can also uh-huh. dance a little bit and they can also play an instrument yeah, and, and you know you, versatile the thing about being an actor is you kind of have to be good at everything uh-huh. it's a pain in the arse uh-huh. i should have been an actor then. <laughs> <laughs> i should have been a fucking actor anybody's looking for shakespeare yeah. please i show you on the next fat loompa loompa <laughs> but you know what i mean it's uh-huh. like that thing is because you have to protect you have to look so natural and pretend to be able to do it uh-huh. you know what i mean and it's do you think it works? Does it help your confidence in that? Eh, uh, well, listen, you see, in a, in a danger situation, uh-huh. I can pretend to be anybody and uh-huh. get me out of anything. Uh-huh. But, you know, it also gives you deep anxiety. Uh-huh. You know, like they say, you know, comedians, stand-up comics are like the most depressive oh, people to meet, you know? It's a mask, isn't it? You know, and actually being an actor is, to an extent, uh-huh. like that. Because you're not trying to make people laugh, you're trying to connect with people. Uh-huh. So you find yourself getting really involved in, on a personal level, I find really intense relationships very, very quickly. Mm -hmm. And it really doesn't have a backbone of commitment. Mm -hmm. Because you do a job with people for a couple of months Mm -hmm. or a year. You know, you spend so much time, they become your family. Mm -hmm. Because you're away, you drop everything. Like, Mm -hmm. acting's the only thing that people go, I can't actually go to my granddad's funeral because I'm doing a play. Or I can't, you know, I'm not prepared to do this or this or this because I'm working. And it comes so little it is all because there's so few opportunities mm-hmm. that people are prepared to sacrifice so so much mm-hmm. it's a good excuse to break up with people real quick and i don't like them listen i've got a joke <laughs> but <laughs> but it, there's been times i've met some really wonderful girls over the years and it's been you're in a you're in a pocket you're in a, a space for a couple of months and then a job mm-hmm. finishes and then you come at that bubble mm-hmm. bursts and you have to deal with the fact that i'm you know i want to get home and see my family mm-hmm. in glasgow paisley you know, you, wherever you're living or whatever you, her circumstances were, and actually you, the commitment, you just have always an excuse as I get mm-hmm. out close, but, and then you, it's really difficult to build mm-hmm. really long-term relationships, yeah. not in terms of not in a loving way, but also in like, with people. Because it's hard, because if you're to be successful as well, you've got to make a lot of sacrifices, yeah. especially with the acting, because you'll get parts in that that lasses might not want you to get as well, as, and that can kind of hold you back, but for, for yourself, man, it's just about concentrating on your career. Do you ever feel... Do you ever struggle knowing who you are some days? Because all, all the different characters, Shakespeare, Method, and Mac, do you ever go sometimes? Because I watched, a, I, I keep saying it, mate, and I, I watched a Jim Carrey documentary. Um, he played yeah, Andy, what was that? Yeah, oh, was and, that? Andy Hoffman. And, and, and he went in character. Yeah, it's great. But he realised, he wanted to stay in that character because it took him away from who he was, then like who he was. Yeah, and he couldn't go back. Ah, it's, couldn't a great, go back. it's a great documentary. It's, ah, it's really good. And I, I watched that, is it Man in the Moon? Uh, I, that's the, 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 the film, yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, do you ever struggle with that? Like, just keep, be jumping into character uh, because it kind of... No, I'm very, like, as, as I said, you know, as I, uh, you know, I said that I've got a very, my relationship with my my team, uh-huh. my, like, I call them my team, like, my people, right. it's very, we're very close. Mm-hmm. And there's no, you know, I'm struggling with this. You right. know, I say, I say, I, I, I'm struggling or I feel a bit down. My mum's like, she's, you know, she's a scouser and she's like to me, just get on with it. Mm-hmm. I don't know who the hell you think you are. You feeling sorry for yourself today? Go up and go on with it, son. Like, you know, and actually like if I, if I get into that, you know, 
mindset, I think I'm somebody else. Mm-hmm. I just be slapped yeah, it out yeah. me. So just kind of ground you. And keep it, you know. Two feet in the but also, like I'm very, I, I was very conscious. Like they, they, they tell you, you know, you've got to be able to leave your baggage at the door before you play a character. Mm-hmm. You can't associate your own baggage or damage or your own dark stuff right. on a character. I, I don't believe because then that gets holded you in a certain or a different way. It's, mm-hmm. it's like hard to explain. It's like. You know, so I played this character called Michael Farmer in Line of Duty, and he was, you know, um, how would I describe him? He basically was neglected growing up, real anxiety, real uh, difficulty talking, Asperger's, maybe a bit autistic, um, you know, really an incapability to talk to women, Mm -hmm. like, um, and he gets accused of rape, and he gets accused of, like, kidnapping and really like dark stuff mm-hmm. and actually he's a really simple boy who's really been let down by his parents or people who love him and his name to there for him and actually you go you, you you've, you've got to find as an actor you've got to find the things that you can relate to that but also in the same time you've got to keep that stuff at a distance because mm-hmm. i kind of go home at night and stay sit in my room pretending uh, that i'm this character this character because it's because it, it fucks with your head because mm-hmm. you put yourself in some like all all good actors you see them lose something when you watch them. Mm-hmm. They prepare to give you something a part of themselves. And actually, you've got to, it's like, it sounds so stupid, but it's like an onion. It's mm-hmm. really like, you, you have to give a layer of yourself when you play a character. Because I have to put myself into the deep, the darkest, deepest places. Especially when you're playing such a, mm-hmm. you know, a, that character in Line of Duty. It's, you, you have to go there. Because if you don't, nobody really mm-hmm. remembers it or uh, cares or really, so that's no, the, art, the you know, acting, but you've really got to give something to yourself. Brain, but playing the characters. Oh, the... when I was doing Line of Duty, it was really bad because my um, my granddad died. My uh, yeah, uh, uh, no, no, it's like eighty over eighteen months ago. But it was so there was a scene. I was I basically I was filming this series, and out of like the five episodes I was in, I was handcuffed to a table for like three, four, twelve hour days. You know, over the course of like six weeks. You know. And that's, you know, just actually when you're sitting there, yourself chatting away, having a joke in between takes, you realise, I'm actually sitting here handcuffed. What would that be like if this was me? Mm-hmm. I've never been in jail, but what would that be like? You know, and all that, you start going through the process and all that stuff. And then when my granddad died, I was getting like convicted and the character's having like this fucking massive freak out. Mm-hmm. And I was doing the scene and then all of a sudden, like three, four minutes later, I come to and... I was like, sorry, like the scene, you know, what what's happened, you know, I don't remember any of it. But it's like in the character, I was like in a an amazing performance place. But for me as a human being, I was just like a wee boy crying that my granddad was dead. Uh, but on camera, you know, you've I put myself in that space. I didn't shut off, I didn't say, I'm not giving you this today. I, I said I'm gonna open myself up and take uh-huh. it. Do you think you can release a lot of stuff then when you're acting as well? Yeah, I, 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 cry, I, I cried all all, all uh-huh. my really all my all my tears mm-hmm. f- you know for my grand eric uh-huh. that day really uh-huh. and that helped me give probably one of the great i think one of the my best performances mm-hmm. i've ever given really on uh-huh. on camera anyway uh-huh. so you know that i you use that bad uh-huh. you use uh-huh. that bad uh-huh. stuff trauma to, and then you uh-huh. put that into something that's really really uh-huh. positive who do you inspire to be who do you, actors do you look at and go man he's a fucking great actor or? oh it really like strange people like Daniel Day Lewis, Daniel Day Lewis is great. Yeah, yeah, in certain films, like yeah. the Phantom Thread is superb. Yeah. Uh, I really like guys like Paul Giamatti. Mm-hmm. Do you know that he was in Billions mm-hmm. recently with yeah. Damien Lewis? Big fan. He did a film years ago called Sideways about mm-hmm. you know they went on a wine tour around America and I don't know. He's, he's he's a guy that you see like such energy, like he just get, you know gives his all. It's it's really. Um, you notice that? Aye, it, it's different. There's a, there's a he looks bizarre at times. He puts himself in these positions that he doesn't care about mm-hmm. looking good all the time. You know, mm-hmm. he doesn't what he look. You know, like Jerry, Jerry B. You know, Jerry mm-hmm. Butler. You know, yeah, it's yeah, always yeah, like you know, Paisley guy. You know, another guy. But, but it's, you know, at the same uh-huh. time, it's it's a different thing. It, for me, it's I'm not interested in being like the you know as much as I'd like to be ripped and chiselled mm-hmm. and tanned and it's tough, man. You know, <laughs> <laughs> it's tough. <laughs> I'm fucking laughing at. I've got feelings. <laughs> I, but do you know what I mean? As much as I'd like that, you know, that's I'm I'm not six foot mm-hmm. three. I'm not blonde. I'm not Australian. Do you know what I mean? So I know that that's not the parts I'm gonna get. Mm-hmm. You know, the surfer boy. As much mm-hmm. as I fucking love to be a surfer right. boy, you're not gonna get those roles. So you have to go. What am I gonna get? And I'm probably I, I play a lot of 
guys with mental health issues. I, <laughs> I play a lot of guys with disabilities. I play I play a lot of guys who are are, are probably struggling in their lives. Part, part. You know, the, the characters. That will say more about your talent but than your appearance. Obviously, you're for Paisley, so we kind of get that character. But does that will say a lot about your talent then to play their parts because they're difficult? Well, I mean, I, I, you know, I'd, I'd hope so. You know, I'd, I'd really hope so. Mm-hmm. Um, but it, it, it's, you just want to keep working. Mm-hmm. That's it, you know. And theatre for me is such a really... Theatre is such a way to express yourself. I was doing this show called The Curious Incident of the Dog in the Night Time. Right, what's that about? Uh, it was about this 15-year-old autistic boy typecast, you know, uh, and he basically finds uh, that his neighbour's dog's dead. He's got a pitchfork through it and he goes on this discovery to find out who killed the dog. Mm-hmm. And in order to do that, he basically unravels this whole story about the, the fact that he thought his mum was dead and actually she ran away with a the neighbour. They moved to London and he goes from Swindon to London, you know, which for an autistic boy or, you know, going on the train for the first time yourself and then going into the subway and, you know, mm-hmm. getting to Paddington Station and w- finding your way up to w- w- Wilsden Green, wherever it was, is like a real struggle. Mm-hmm. So I was doing that show for about 10, 10 months and that, you know, every night I was on stage for like two, two and a half hours, you know, solid, didn't leave the stage. Brilliant. But, you know, again, really, it's the parts you want to play, man. They're the lead oh. characters, man. Do you know what I mean? You don't, I don't want to play the guy who's... Is that your life? I don't want to play the guy who's second at the back. Do you know what I mean? Oh. And I've got no, I'm not sorry to say that. I don't want to play the, a, like a guy in the ensemble. I don't want to, I, I, you want to play the guys with the, you know the story. You want, you want, you want, you want, you know, you want to be the best you can be, and you also want to do the best, aye. the best roles, the aye. biggest parts. Fucking That's the right. chance. Because how then you you go, was I really an actor if I didn't mm-hmm. push myself to the limit as much as I can? But that show was great. But it was also like really, really, like really That's hard. That's a good way of looking at it, Scott. And like I say, you got your head screwed on as well because to look at that way and say, "Why to be the best?" You can be the best. The only person you can fail is you. And like I said, you're clearly fucking on the path, mate. You're clearly doing amazing. Yeah, you know I, I, mean? I mean, I, it's, I, I'm, again, I feel very lucky. I feel blessed. But you can make your own luck or not because you've obviously put in the grind as well. Do you know what I mean? But, you know, it's, it's like the, the high... So I've just done this Amazon series called Carnival Row, which right. will come out uh, at some point in 2019. Um, it's got, like, Orlando Bloom and Cara Delevingne. Right? And some, she's uh, a girl. Uh, she's a lovely girl. <laughs> uh, lovely girl, lovely. She's very, very good actress. You know, great. It was a real pleasure to work with her. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> uh, Kid, an actor, because he likes it, mate. He's a uh, pervert. <laughs> uh, no, and like some really good guys, like Jared Harris as well. I don't know if you see, he was in Mad Men, mm. Mad Men in the Crown. He's a really good actor. Crown. Aye, so he played uh, her, the Queen's dad, mm-hmm. the old King George the Sixth, I think, who right. died in the first series. Mm-hmm. Uh, so it was like that was like a different level that I was working with, like a listeners. You know, aye. You know, um, not just in the UK, but across the pond, mm-hmm. and actually, that you know, walking onto sets with like three, four hundred extras, uh-huh. you know, like cranes mm-hmm. and crank five cameras, and you know, filming it in Prague in like a mm-hmm. huge big studio. It was, you know, it was it was it was an amazing experience, and I'm really excited to see the show when it comes out. But again, you go that you get up to like the next level. And then you think, oh, well, that means I'm, I can't yeah, fall back down. Right? And you really can. Mm-hmm. And actually, to then get on it like the next level, mm-hmm. I'm up against then, like, it's like a pyramid scheme. You know, it's like, swear to God, mm-hmm. like, so it's like, you think all the you know, all the people who do, like, the youth theatre at the mm-hmm. beginning, all the people who love that, and then they mm-hmm. go up next. And then the people who want to go to drama school, and then the ones mm-hmm. who don't get into drama school, they fall off. And then the people after drama school who get the agents, and then the people who don't, they drop off. Mm-hmm. And then, then you kind of get work, they drop off. And then it's, you know, this mm-hmm. all, all the time. So the people that I'm now up against are like That's Americans, like, oh. mm-hmm. English, Australian, you know, it's not, mm-hmm. you know, 10 guys from Glasgow who are, who have known all my life. Uh, it's like, I'm up against like a, a guy from New York or and Los Angeles and... Who, st- who you know, starred in blockbuster films. Yeah, no. But then but there comes a point and all we go, right, you can go, come complacent and say I've made it, but you never make it in that game, do you? Is there come a point? Where you, do you get offered roles now, or do you still need addition? Uh, it's it's really mixed. Is it? Yeah, because you get to that stage, but but and, and down, 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 down south, uh, no addition, mm-hmm. addition all the time. Where's the dream for you? America. I, I'm, I'm in a, yeah. I, I was over in. I went to Los Angeles for about four weeks in April just to kind of get a feel of the land because mm-hmm. I just finished the the Carnival Row, so I went over and. I just wanted to see if I could live out there or what the environment was like and 
just to see how it how it differed from London, mm-hmm. and it's very very different. It's fucking nuts. Um, great place, mm-hmm. but in terms of like the the auditioning world, mm-hmm. it's it's very very different. It's a lot more. You know, we don't have time to waste, man. Like mm-hmm. you know, if you either know the stuff, or you don't. Like get out or you do it. You know what I mean? Like don't mm-hmm. fuck about. We don't mm-hmm. care. Mm-hmm. And it's like you know, it really gets because there's thousands of people on there. Really gets you know to I mean? like you walk into a room, it's like you know. I remember the first the first audition I went in there for it was something really quite big and I wanted to do the character in a certain way and this like oh, like camp casting assistant. Mm-hmm. What was that? I, 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 I can't tell you. Oh. You know, I know. Uh, I follow him. No, because I signed these like, an NDA, so I can't really talk about oh, it. It's, you know? it's a, it was like a series, like a mm-hmm. uh, TV series. Mm-hmm. Um, and this guy, I, I did the character in a certain way, like it was maybe like goofy or something. Mm-hmm. So I played him like quite dark and menacing. <laughs> I should, it. I should too. I test it, you know. And then all of a sudden the guy's just like going, "What are you doing? Like, th- why are you doing it like that? Do you not know what goofy means?" And I was like, "What the hell are you talking about? Like, I'm doing it like this for this, like this, for this." And he's like, "No, no, 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 no. You know, like goofy. You know, like the character. You know, uh, with the long ears. floppy ears. Just be an idiot, man." And I was just like, "Oh God." Did I ask you about that? <laughs> you know, I swear. So, so then, then he walks out to me. He's like, "Well, as I walk out the room, he's like, have a good." Try trip mm-hmm. and i was like that's my first audition in los angeles i was like maybe it's time just to get on the plane uh-huh. do you know what i mean I, and i was on my own mm-hmm. it's real I, being an actor it's a lonely journey it's really lonely aye. but the the negative steps that like i say i keep I always say it mate the first step you don't need to see the full staircase mate so i'll be taking the aye. first step and people can uh, fail and fail and then you go fuck this isn't for me but you got to keep failing mate failing is just a, another step towards oh, your goal listen nothing's you know came I mean? nothing's came easy uh-huh. for me like you know even we're talking about still game you know you, I got offered the part and then I had to go and put myself through the ringer to audition for the part again uh-huh. Do you know what I'm saying it, so it, this, this, it, it's like that all the time and actually I know a couple of guys who have just had things l- drop land land uh-huh. land movies films you know uh-huh. And I think they get to a stage where they don't appreciate it. So there's like days like I watched one um one clip of Carnival Row. <laughs> no sad sat man. And I watched it and I it just it really it, it I was sitting there crying, just mm-hmm. going cause it was so a so much a big deal for me to be like, I've worked all my life to get to there and that's the biggest thing I've ever done. And that's the biggest people that's the biggest person I've ever worked with. Mm-hmm. And I'm doing that and it's really fucking good. And I'm really proud of myself. Uh-huh. But in the same time, it's like you go, nobody feels the way I uh, feel about it. Uh-huh. Nobody cares as much uh-huh. as me. Of course. So it's weird. So being an actor is like, we're all, we're all nuts. Uh-huh. Everybody's co- nuts. For sure. But I, nuts. but I think to an extent, it's like we watch people uh-huh. and we manage to, to an extent, learn how to manipulate uh-huh. our own feelings uh-huh. to be able to pretend to be somebody else. Uh-huh. It's a difficult thing to do because the majority of people we don't fucking like being with themselves. Do you, do you know what I mean? It. So um, imagine like, a lot of actors do it as a form of escapism because they mm-hmm. don't really like who they are. Mm-hmm. Like comedy. The comedy you know, it's big comedy pals and that in here. And the, the, I always say the comedy it is, it's a mash. Look at your Robbie Williams and that. They're constantly trying to give their energy away to make other people feel good and make them feel happy, but they're not working internally in their To try you know and fix I mean? it. You know, I, um, and, and a really big part of my life, I, you, you know, I don't really talk about it as much as I should. Um, we, you know, I, I went to church, mm-hmm. uh, like, you know, I'll, I'll you know, younger. You know, no, like my still. mom, and, my mom and dad still go. I'll like, you know, uh-huh. every week. Really, like it's a really big part of their life, and it was a faith is a really big part of my life. Uh-huh. You know, it was something that I was doing, you know, maybe every week until I was about sixteen, uh-huh. and then not like a uh, Catholic Protestant, none of that, not like not nonsense, uh, but none of that. Life. Like it, it was like like a, a just a bit of faith and go. It wasn't like it was a non-denominational church, so it wasn't like you know. Uh-huh. I, I can't like you because you're a Catholic, or you can't oh, like yeah, me because yeah, I'm yeah. none of that. It was mm-hmm. just like you went there. It was about God, and it was about it was like it's like counselling. Mm-hmm. I, I believe like it's like it's like mm-hmm. individual spiritualized counselling with somebody who is maybe not there, but a higher power, a higher power. You know, and I, I, it's still it's it's something that's given me a lot of comfort in dark days because I can assure you I don't talk about it as much because mm-hmm. I'm living my best life. Mm-hmm. Right, <laughs> no, I'm joking, no, I'm joking. No, I'm joking. I'm joking. Um, <laughs> But you know, I, this dark, I've you know, I've had dark days. Mm-hmm. I mean, I was skinned and living in London for three and a half years, and there was a six month period I had to, I had to get off the drink. Mm-hmm. You know, I was twenty one, had to take six months sober. Like, oh, did you? Yeah, uh, just, just, just a wee bit of loneliness and a wee bit away from home. Just and that, and no, no, actually, it was, it was, I was working all the like, I was doing plays all the time, mm-hmm. and I was like, I was just chasing the adrenaline 
off the show, getting drunk, you know, four or five nights a week, and then you're hungover, and then you man, you have a nap, and you eat food, and then you can do the show, mm -hmm. and then you go out, and then you get fucked again, and then, Aye. and it was just that real that continual cycle, and you know, I, 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 I hurt a lot of people, and that's what you do, you know, I'm self, I was, I was, I was self, I am selfish, I was selfish, you don't really, it doesn't really change, I have to be selfish to do what I, you know, to be successful, you've got to be selfish, but at the same time, I was selfish in really, in a really bad way, like, a lot of drinking, and a lot of sleeping around. Aye, aye, but this is, you know, part of your journey, mate, and I, I did it for fucking, I didn't change, mate, I was in my 30s, you know what I mean, so I did it for a long time, and for you at a young You're age. You're 30, I thought you were still in your 20s. I thought, well, thanks, mate, I always knew I liked going, boy. <laughs> so I done it for a long time, but like I say, mate, that was to numb all my demons in pain, do you know what I mean? So for you at such a young age to realise this, mate, is unbelievable, and it's only going to propel you and shoot you. Yeah, I mean, I, I, th I think I realised that a couple of years ago, and uh, you ju I, just ign I just ignored it, really. What yeah. made you go then? Fuck this! I need to come off the booze. Oh, I was sitting in my mum and dad's house for my sister's birthday, at New Year's Eve, and I got a, my nose just started bleeding. Aye, stress, worry. Everyone. I just, just no. I was like, it was like two in the, two in the morning. We we're all sitting there drinking. It's like mm. the same, and I just was like, I'd just been drinking for like a week. Mm. Fuck's sake. Do you know what I mean? In between, like, not like staying up, like you know, ah, go yeah, to yeah, sleep, yeah. but you know, just putting your body the through the you know the strains, mm -hmm. and I just kind of you know, you know, just doing nonsense. But you know, think a lot of the actors and that, and the, the kind of in that environment where they're after a show or after something they're away bevying. Well, I mean, it, actors bevy all. The, they say the first day of rehearsals, you you look in the room and the, what actors judges the people that they want to go and sit in the pub with. Is that? That is what they do in the first day. They get people out and say, "But I could I sit in the pub with you for a couple of hours?" Mm -hmm. Is that a nervous thing? No, I just think we're we're sociable people and we like to tell stories and we like to mm. connect with human beings mm. and actually being sociable and meeting new people, meeting new people. Mm. When you go out and night out, you get to meet new people, aye, aye. you get to see new faces, mm. you get to hear new stories, you get, mm. you know, and it's actually just that we're like sponges, I think it's about absorbing, absorbing all of that stuff. Mm -hmm. And also we love to just, you know, party. Listen mate, I love to party, not me, I've been the arty and party man, but there does come a time you go right with it, man. I want to live the best life I can be and I want to be the best version I can be and the day that you've got to distance yourself for that and, and stop the things that are holding you back because if you keep drinking, drinking then your frequency becomes lower yeah. and you don't ask, you don't get all these good opportunities. But like this year we've had a great year man, was with a lot of stuff we're doing because my frequency sign. Obviously they are, they're, I'm kidding. <laughs> 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 so I'm kidding these guys. Uh, but when your frequency is high, when you're uh, mentally strong, when you're doing good things, you surround yourself with other positive yeah. people and, and doors open, you go, wait a minute, this is happening because you're not you're necessarily doing these parts, going to LA, doing line of duty, doing still game. It doesn't really feel it either. Even though you do it and you go, right, wait a minute, is that it? And that's what a lot of people go around because a lot of these people are looking for fame. And it's good, man, to get attention, this and that, but when you get that, you go, fuck me, is that that? Because everything's within. So when you start, it's all about, pro Tommy Robbins says, I always say on this, man, progression, always raising the bar, like you're saying there. Yeah. The pyramid, I want to go better, we can I go next level. What other director I can work with? Do you know what I mean? There's loads of, like, obviously I'm, I'm very ambitious and I'm, you know, but I'm also, you know, I'm, I'm 25 on Friday, you know what I mean? And I go, I, I go... I've got such a long way to go. Like some of my pals didn't finish drama school until they were like 28, 29, and I graduated drama school at 19. Where did you start? I started just after I turned 17, and that mm -hmm. fucked my head, man. Like, mm -hmm. I was there, I was the youngest person, in the, like the oldest person in my year was like 34 when we started. That's like, like it was double my age. Oh, sick. You know what I mean? And it's like, so I was there, there was all these people for around the world. I've just left, you know, high school in Paisley at the end of fifth year, and I'm in this class, and it's like, Eight guys from like London, a couple of people from like America, mm -hmm. you know, Irish, you know, other Scottish people, and I'm sitting there going, I'm just a like a wee boy, but I can't let these guys know I'm a wee boy, so I have to be the. So you put the act on straight. I had there. to be. I was like, I, I was like the 17 year old alpha male for mm -hmm. three years at drama school, mm -hmm. and I was you know 19, being like the guy go you know, no, I fucking know what I'm talking about, and I'm the best actor, and I fucking mm -hmm. you know, and actually. I, I didn't really, I didn't enjoy it because mm -hmm. I was worried, I was stressed, and that's, you know, that was my own anxiety. Act, 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 see, the thing is, I love performing. Mm -hmm. I, that, I've never not enjoyed performing, but it was just the people and the institution for that period of time. It was really hard because you see these people every day, you're trying to grow as a human being, but at the same time, there's competition there. Mm -hmm. 
because everybody wants to be the You're best. The enemy, aren't they? So do you know what I mean? It's it's a total double edged sword. You've mm-hmm. got you can't offend anybody, but you also have to like really toe the line with them. What's your favourite film? Oh, uh, Monsters Inc. Is it? Ah, it's one. Of, I think it's, <laughs> it's it? such a. It's it's not. Cartoon? It's like what I've got loads of different films, but it's probably it's. It's something that I connect with for many different reasons. Mm-hmm. I think as a as a you know as a as a wee guy watching it, mm-hmm. but also it's got everything you want in a film. Really, it's got laughter. It makes you cry. It makes mm-hmm. you feel good. It makes you feel, you know mm-hmm. homely. It's and it, I think what Pixar the films they do like they they're you know really really mm-hmm. superb. Would you like their uh, animation kind of stuff? I no, I that? mean maybe I maybe but but like in terms of acting perform- obviously that's not like a it's mm-hmm. like a cartoon I, but for like film film like something like Shawshank Redemption's great I like mm. you know Back to the Future I love Lord the second Lord of the Rings for you'd be good for a bunch of the cuckoos nest uh, have you seen that no oh, I, no, yeah. I have I have I'm <laughs> slap for that that kind of Jack, Jack Nicholson oh, it's a great. fucking great film no there's lo- you know there's loads there's lo- it, there's loads of different you know you, to me you, you know you relate to films for different reasons mm. you know what I mean like there's performances in films that I love, but I hate like the films. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, I think Tom Cruise and Magnolia is just superb, mm-hmm. and the f- that film in general is like superb. But it's like, but then this this films, you know, I think uh, like Notting Hill, mm-hmm. you know, Hugh, Hugh Grant, Grant is superb in that film. Like, really brilliant. Not going to notice some of them. Yeah, but, but, uh, but that's it. Do you know what I mean? There's loads of different. There's really moments in everything that you whatever it grabs you, and you kind of go fuck that was intense aye good. then that's when you go regardless mm-hmm. if it's make if it makes you laugh intensely or it makes you cry intensely uh-huh. it's still doing the same thing uh-huh. and that's when you go oh fuck that's special. do you think it's got to do with the director or can the actors do they make the choices uh, no I think theatre directors and film directors are really really different mm-hmm. the film directors don't necessarily the ones I've worked with they don't really press your buttons mm-hmm. like theatre directors in terms to get you into the dark places Mm-hmm. That's your job. Their job is to make, for, to help you transfer that onto the camera. Mm-hmm. That makes sense? Aye, aye, aye. Whereas theatre director is about they're building a group of actors together mm-hmm. to form it for a live audience every night. Mm-hmm. So they're giving you a structure in order for you to be able to do it night after night after aye. night after night. Whereas the TV, the, the film director mm-hmm. could be like going, right, Scott, I, I need you just to, you've got... 10 minutes we've got two takes here right you need to you're either giving it now or we'll just call it and then you go right i'm gonna go and have a fag you go outside smoke mm-hmm. you get yourself fucking in that place worked up here we go i'm fucking doing it boom mm-hmm. you're in the thing and then all of a sudden like Wah! you know whatever that is mm-hmm. whatever that comes out mm-hmm. you know in theater you would never shout so loud that you would hurt your voice Aye. but when you're on camera you rip your throat out to pieces mm-hmm. Cause it's got to be real it's got to be yeah, there it's great it's yeah. take after take as well oh man it's like i was doing this I, I was doing this monologue shouting in this courtyard there's like 350 people around me and i'm like really shouting at this guy up in the fucking wall like, rah, 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 like. so we did like three cameras each mm-hmm. so i was like right great i'll have maybe five takes and they'll have they'll have it all sorted mm-hmm. so we did like eight setups of three different positions with these uh, eight setups with these three cameras so I ended up doing the thing like 24 times, and by the end of it, I was like, I was like, right, I'm going to just go and have a, can I get a, can I get a lemon and ginger tea? Dinner. But you know what I mean? So it's like, the, you know, it's like, it's great, mate, the whole, mate, it's, it's the best fucking job in the world. I like I say, mate, you're, you know? you're, you're smashing it, mate. You're doing it in the last two, and then another, a boy who dream of yours, mate, playing at Park Kid last cut, cut a month ago. All right, well, last, last May, aye. Aye, do you know what I mean? There's 60,000 people fucking. I, I, I've got Martin Comston to thank for that, really, because hmm. we'd obviously work together in line of duty, and, you know, just, you know, James McAvoy dropped out and they were like, yeah, you know, we need another big big, big name big headliner, business. you know what I mean? So <laughs> they obviously phoned, phoned, uh, phoned me up. No, Martin was very good to get me into that. And that was, that was, that was probably, you know, something that I thought I'd never, you'd never, you'd never do, you know, mm-hmm. Six, there was 62,000 people that's there, I think. Mate. And that's something, that's when you know you're on the right path and you're getting invited. You know, to I came things. on, I came on at the 67th minute and I played 14 minutes. Mm-hmm. And it was like, so obviously Celtic had just won the first Invincible, they'd won the yeah, Invincible treble. treble. Double treble. No, just oh, the first, first one, one, just the first one. And then, um, you know, it was like incredible, you know, oh. they're singing, you know, in the heat of Lisbon. And I'm oh. coming on going, oh my, you know, Absolutely. two minutes in the game, I try to tackle Scott Brown, he put me in my arse. <laughs> and, then, and then four minutes later, I put Momo Sill in his arse. So that was my, that was my <laughs> own, you know, I... 
Um, it's like you can't tackle Scott yeah. Brown, so I'll go for Mo, um, Mo Salah. You know, <laughs> when you follow, when do you start back following the still game? Uh, it starts back in a, in a few weeks. Good. Yeah. Um, Looking forward to getting back. L- listen, it's just it's just good. I've had a bit of a time off acting in general, just good. you know, since since april really so i'm just kind of looking forward to get back into the groove in that in that way uh-huh. you know because i was solid for two and a half years like literally uh-huh. i was doing this tour for 10 months the cu- you know the curious job i was doing and within that one job i did like three other jobs uh-huh. so i was just just always constant constant, constant. Tired, you so think, i was yeah. doing like i did the last series of still game whilst i was doing the play uh-huh. so i was getting picked up at like five in the morning you know filming at like one in the afternoon and then I'd go and have like two hours off and then I'd have to go into right. the play. Right, you know. Who's your favourite character in Still Game? Uh, who's my favourite character or who's my favourite actor? Oh, both. So my favourite character is probably is probably Victor. But right. m- but my favourite actors, I think I think Ford's just Ford and Greg together as a team, they're superb, but there's, a, there's something about the way that Greg plays Victor that is just, he's got those little donny eyes, <laughs> which are great. But then, like, Ford's, I've, I've really, like, Ford's on a different planet uh-huh. at times in terms of his ability, but also how he can, you know, be messing about and then he just goes into it. Uh-huh. And he's, he, you know, you can't... He's re- a character. He, he's also, he's playful. He's really playful. Uh-huh. Like, the two of them together, it's like, I, I've learned so much from actually being with those two uh-huh. guys because they are brilliant uh-huh. and... You know, I think sometimes they get a lot of bad press because that's the press. You know, no, no, not just necessarily from like the papers or whatever. I think just in general, people always go, "Oh, well, you know, oh, you know, those two, you know, it's time to put it away or whatever." Or, you know, mm-hmm. but they they write it. You know what I mean? Like they sit down for months and they put this thing together and they created this world that's you know, you know, and they've wrote two sh- shows at the Hydro and Something you know, amazing. It, it, it's like it's mm-hmm. it's such a huge achievement and actually do you know what is so typically scottish and it really annoys me instead of us celebrating really talented people what we do is we go why well do you know what i've had enough of that uh-huh. do you know what they, they're, they're getting too successful for my liking so i don't why want them to get any mate i and actually do you know what that's the problem like uh-huh. we do that about everything and actually we should go well if they can do that you know what can somebody uh-huh. else do uh-huh. or how can we all work together to make it you know good and there's a lot of there's a lot of that and it, it that's just life because people are unhappy with themselves. They want to see everybody else unhappy if they look as if they're having fun and doing well. It's, you know it's I mean? just such a different attitude from, and like, you know, when you were in, when I was in Los Angeles, everyone's like, it's never no, it's mm-hmm. always yes. Mm-hmm. Yes, that might be a little bit difficult now, but we'll get there. Mm-hmm. And it's, you know, and I know that's Positivity, just it's a, a lot of that. And, and, and here it's just, no, no, sorry, can I do it? No, we don't, no, no we don't have the money. No, we can't find the money. No, and actually, right. from a spiritual point of view, mm-hmm. you know, something that, you know, F- the faith has given me especially like you know i can do all things through christ who strengthens mm-hmm. me that you know that idea that nothing is too much do you think that kind of grounds you then oh well, it, it, keeps it, you, it, keeps you it does but it also just goes like when somebody says to me no that can't happen you mm-hmm. go well i don't believe that that's right. true i believe that it, it can happen anything can happen that's just other people projecting their fears onto you do you know, do you know but, I mean? but i'm talking about like project based stuff like when somebody says oh we don't have the money to give you that well there's money there mm-hmm. or you know we don't have the the time for us to be able to make that in that period Aye. we'll find the time do you know what i'm saying this people are very it's very easy just to shut things down and see we're not quite, doing it and aye. actually we do that in terms of like the acting industry that's why we're not producing enough drama because we don't have enough money or we don't have the content or we don't or it's not it might not be good enough or we, you know we do this all the time in sports you know what i mean like we just, just, i don't even like basketball right but it was on bbc sport about you know the uk the uk basketball team uh-huh. all the guys from the nations all their funding get cut and then they're like, they're all up in arms. And then the, the governing body who cut their funding are going, well, these guys obviously really aren't interested in playing basketball. Oh. And these guys are going, well, how can we play basketball? Because you've cut all our funding. Aye, aye, aye. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, it's, I know it's, Everything's backwards. But it's, it is. It's, it, Everything's backwards. It's such a, you know, I, uh-huh. it's, 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 aye, aye. That's what it is. But Scotty boy, I know you're a busy man. And like I say, I love your work. And I'm looking forward to seeing you in the future, mate. And I'm looking forward to see, uh, before I go, mate, see when you do something in 2000, sorry, do something in 2018 that comes out a year later. Does that not piss you off? You know what? Well, I started away. it in 2017. Uh-huh. It, sta- it started filming it in the, in the oh, September. I'm impatient, mate. I'd need to do it tomorrow. No, it's, it is, it's, it's something you, you kind of, you know, you, f- you kind of forget about it. Uh-huh. Um, and it, that's good. Uh, like, I can't remember, I was, I can't remember any of the last series of still game. Uh-huh. You know, this the season, the season eight. I, 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 I can't, I, I watch it, but I can't, 
you know, I can remember, like, I remember, I always remember the, the first day I went on set and I did the, le- the, the talking letter book scene. Oh. That was my very first day. That was you a, know, that was a big scene, and that's right? like the you know that's had something like over like twenty million views mm-hmm. or something now, like on fuck, you know whatever it's you know for just it's like a three mm-hmm. minute scene, and for me that was like I'll always remember that like day, but then like the last season I can't remember anything. Like mm-hmm. we, I, we, I was at a charity event the other week, and this wee boy's like, "Can you do the, can you do the thing about the the the, the numbers and the letters or whatever?" And I was like, "I've no idea." What <laughs> I was like, "I've no idea what you're talking about, mate." <laughs> He's like, "Can you do the dog?" I'm like, mm, "Mate, I'm mm-hmm. sorry, no." <laughs> I don't know. What, 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 can you, sh- you show me and then I'll do it, and then he does it perfectly. And I was like, "All right, is that what you're talking about? The legs all shut on that." Yeah, yeah. Just, That's brilliant. So, listen, Scotty boy, mate, I thoroughly enjoyed you coming on today, mate, and appreciate you coming on and taking your time. So I know you're a busy guy. Cheers, mate. And no doubt you're going to absolutely take over in the future, mate. You've got your whole life in front of you, man, and it's brilliant, mate, that you're doing so well, mate. Such a good guy. Good at football, and all. By the way, I may as well throw that in there. Not as good as me, but cheers. <laughs> cheers. Uh,